a, gr a very great part of challenges actually come from your own mind. And that is, I would suggest, the greater part of challenges in your life are not through external events, although yes, they also happen, but the greater part of challenges is the unobserved mind. What your mind is doing and saying about your life, the narrative in your mind, and the dysfunction of your mind, the misinterpretations of, li of, of everything in your mind when you, as we mentioned earlier, when you look at life through the conditioning of your mind, the veil of conditioning, the narrative, and you cannot separate what is from your interpretation of what is. And then that is, and, and suddenly you realize, okay, this is, here, here's the challenge, and you're not complaining anymore. You're just looking at it and facing it. And you become more alert through every challenge that arises. Even the little ones, like your flight is cancelled, you arrive at the airport, it's a little challenge. Or you, what, what, you stumble and you fall and you break something, it's a, a little bit bigger challenge. But, but they're all, the mechanism behind the reactivity is the same. So first you can start with little things, little things that go wrong. Flight is cancelled. It's cancelled. Nobody's telling you what's happening. And there are 50 people angry all around you. So you're either drawn into that or you just, okay. Because you see it as, oh, it's a sign for me to be alert. It's an opportunity for intensified presence. And then you become actually intelligent for the first time. Become, you access a, one could say, higher intelligence. And then if, right, if a certain action is possible in that moment, you take action. And it'll be right. It's not reactive. It's action, but not reaction. And if no action is possible, you're simply in a state of complete surrender and you feel great, just... And maybe you sit there for two hours and still nothing has happened and then perhaps you go and go to a hotel or you sleep on this chair and it's not, it's no longer creates a problem in the conventional sense of the word. It's not, it no longer creates an unhappy entity that is you. It creates more alertness. And I have had accounts of people who were given a very uh, serious prognosis when they went to see their doctor. And usually the case is that when the doctor tells you something that might imply that, that there is not much time left for you. That's a terrible thing when you believe that your life has is not complete yet, that there's so much more that you wanted to do, that you could do, but you may not be able to do it. So usually the first reaction would be very great suffering. And, but in some people, that also has create, created, I've had quite a few accounts of people who suddenly became intensely alert and present. They, they, they refused to leave the present moment because they realized either through coming into contact with this or some other similar teaching or intuitively, without having any guidance, they realized, if I leave the present moment, I become unhappy. If I go just a few months into the future where I may not be here anymore, or the body, or me, or whatever, I become unhappy. So they go just totally present and suddenly feel a sense of not only great alertness, but almost elation. There was an account a few years ago of a Unfortunately, I've forgotten his name, a British musician, relatively well-known, but not world-famous. And he was given, he was only, I believe, in his 30s or early 40s, he was given this diagnosis the, that he would only have another year to live. 
And, but this was an unusual case. He reported, he told it in an interview, he walked out of the doctor's office and in, without going through the stage of suffering first, he immediately experienced, without having read any spiritual book, he immediately realized this arising of very intense a life sense of aliveness. And he lived completely in the present moment, suddenly started living completely in the present moment. And then he said in the interview, he thought, why didn't I do this before? Why did I wait for this? And he felt not, you can't call it, it's not happiness what he felt, it's not happiness, that's a superficial thing, something deeper than happiness. He felt life itself, the joy of life that is deeper than happiness or unhappiness. When perhaps even to call it joy is not quite right that in the, an intensified sense of aliveness. And what is that? What is that intensified sense of aliveness? And what happened? Why did he, or anybody to whom something like that happens, why do they suddenly feel that and they didn't have it before? Because time was removed from them. There was no more time, no future. And without future, the ego cannot survive. The, the sense of self, the egoic sense of self, needs future and it needs past. It's built. It's built. It's, it's up through the past, and it needs future for its uh, its fulfillment, and of course, ultimate destruction. But that's, the ego doesn't want to talk about that. <laughs> so the ego got got destroyed through that very quickly. And so it, it has happened to people who've lost everything, who've had, who were involved in huge natural disasters or man-made disasters. Uh, not to every, it doesn't happen to everybody. Some people remain stuck in terrible suffering. But these, it's always an opportunity for, for true spiritual awakening. And so, but you have come here now because you no longer need You've done the stage of suffering. So suffering plays, it still may still be important because it will intensify your presence when it comes. But you don't need suffering as such because you are voluntarily inviting the state of presence into your life. It, it begins to manifest through you.